in the last stream, we were working on the fission reactor and the industrial turbine from Mechanism producing 285,000 redstone flux per tick using the fissile fuel that we automated a few streams ago. Now, at the very end of the last stream, we did run into a slight issue, and that slight issue is that due to the current way that our turbine is set up, if the turbine fills up on redstone flux, it will stop turning steam into water. That means that the fission reactor here will stop receiving water, which means it will overheat and explode, releasing a massive cloud of radiation everywhere, destroying all of our hard work and also permanently damaging this area for us going forward. So the plan for today's stream is to try and fix this issue by building an energy cube so big and able to hold so much redstone flux that we could basically never feasibly fill it using this turbine right here. There are a couple of other ways you could fix this issue, of course. Um, you could, for example, and, and by the way, the easiest way to fix this issue uh, would just be to take the water coming out of the steam turbine and void it, just delete it all uh, using a, a fluid trash can, that being this guy right here, and then put uh, like four or five sinks down around the fission reactor and just have all of those pumping into the fission casing uh, at all times. That would work, but I think it's a little bit of a less um, inventive solution and a little bit of a less cool solution, at least compared to the giant multi-block structure that is the induction matrix from mechanism. So to make the induction matrix, we need induction casing, we need an induction port, at least one, and we need structural glass. The structural glass, like with the turbine and also like with the fission reactor, is optional, but I do think it makes the reactor uh, or the induction matrix look significantly better. Much like, again, with the uh, fission reactor and with the turbine, there is a choice to make as to how big you want your induction matrix to be. And I think the maximum size for the induction matrix is 18 by 18 by 18. So it's a massive multi-block, um, at least according to the wiki. We did a bit of uh, counting between streams, and I think we're going to put ours right here between these two item routers. Uh, this gap here is about 22 blocks. And given that our platform is odd, which means it has like a center block, and also I shouldn't uh, walk past the tree farm when I can avoid it, but uh, because our platform has a center block, which is right here, or right here even, um, we're gonna make ours 17 by 17 by 17, uh, because that means that our induction matrix will fit perfectly, kind of symmetrically in the center of the, uh, the platform there. So if we're going to do that, we're going to need quite a lot of the induction casing, Thankfully, the induction casing really isn't too expensive. It requires four steel and then one energy tablet, the energy tablet being two infused alloys, three gold and four redstone dust. Easy enough. The structure glass we've made before, again, just uh, four steel and glass. This is what we're going to use for the majority of our giant 17 by 17 cube. And then uh, the induction port also fairly easy. And again, we only need uh, one or two of these uh, in general. So I think it's probably going to be worth teaching our system uh, how to make these energy tablets here. Our system does already know how to make the infused alloys, which is perfect. And I feel like we might as well also just take it one step further then and teach it how to make both the induction casing and the, uh, the structural glass. Uh, I am going to make sure that we swap out that dark glass there for a regular old Minecraft glass, which we don't have a huge amount of just yet, although we should have a drawer full of that glass. Here it is. I think I'm gonna add this to uh, my shameful collection of uncolored drawers over here. These three drawers uh, don't match with the rest of the drawers. And so for the time being, they're being hidden uh, behind the rest of the drawers, just so they're still accessible by the system. So that should hopefully allow us to auto craft uh, both the casing and the glass fairly easily. Uh, all we have to do, of course, is throw these patterns into this crafter here. Some people in the YouTube comments did ask if we have better crafters in the pack because there are a couple of add-on mods for refined storage that do add better crafters. Um, I think there's one that adds tiered crafters like iron crafters, gold crafters, and diamond crafters. And then there's also a second add-on mod that adds like a big multi-block crafter that lets you put a ton of crafting uh, recipes in. Unfortunately, we don't have either of those mods installed. And so uh, this is the best crafter that we have available. And so going forward, if we want to craft more recipes, we're just going to have to put down uh, even more of these uh, standard crafters here, which should be fine. Uh, but uh, essentially now, if we go ahead and request some of the casing here, 
we should be able to build this uh, giant 17 by 17 cube, I think, fairly quickly. So this is gonna be the bottom of the platform. Right now it's a three by three, uh, but we are gonna make this into a 17 by 17 platform, which means we want to go eight blocks out in each direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the eighth one wants to be the actual wall itself. And then we wanna do the same thing in this direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, the eighth one gonna be something like that. And um, at that point, we can probably grab our infinity wand here and make our lives just a little bit easier because then we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, the last one's gonna be the actual casing and the same on this side. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, the edge here is gonna be made out of casing. And then all we need to do from there is just make this uh, lower level here into a, uh, a giant 3D cube. I will point out this is massive overkill. The amount of power that a cube this size is uh, theoretically able to store is going to be uh, staggering. And at least initially, we're probably not going to be able to set up a induction matrix that can hold the maximum amount of power, despite the fact that we are building uh, kind of the maximum sized reactor, but it will leave us room to grow in the future should we want to go for the uh, just crazy amount of red flux that the maximum sized reactor can hold. And boom. So if that has been built correctly, then I believe that should give us the red particles. Now, it's quite possible that that bit of string in there is maybe causing us issues. It's also quite possible that I missed a, um, a cube somewhere, although I don't think I have. Let me try replacing this uh, back here. There we go. Okay, so when you see the red particle effects, that means that the multi-block is done. And so this is going to be our giant energy storage cube. So if we right click on this, you'll see that right now, this whopping 17 by 17 cube can hold zero redstone flux and it can input and output zero redstone flux per tick. But it is 17 by 17 by 17. So right now, this is a big nothing cube. It's a big cube that does absolutely nothing whatsoever outside of maybe looking a little cool. So in order for this to actually work, there are a couple of things we're going to need. For one, we do need the uh, induction ports that we mentioned previously, uh, but even with these, that's still not really going to, uh, to change anything. Um, I think we'll put one of our induction ports maybe just right here at, uh, at the top of the cube, like so. Again, that's going to uh, form the multi-block, but it still can't transfer or hold any redstone flux. And the reason for that is that in order for this to actually work, you have to fill it with induction cells and induction providers. The induction cells determine how much storage your cube has, and the induction providers determine how much redstone flux per tick you can transfer into or out of the cube itself. And there are four tiers of both, right? Basic, advanced, elite, and ultimate, as with everything in mechanism. So if you were to put one basic induction cell into this cube, and again, you could put one in this giant cube, you can put as many or as few as you like in, um, if we were to put just one basic induction cell into here, um, it would be able to hold 3.2 uh, giga FE, which I believe is 3.2 billion redstone flux. So a pretty high amount. Um, on the flip side though, if we were to put in an ultimate induction cell, uh, it would be able to hold 1.6 trillion FE. And given that we have a 17 by 17 area to fill, we can put in a staggering number of these ultimate induction cells and every single induction cell that you put in can hold 1.6 trillion redstone flux to the point where if we fill this thing up, I believe we're going to be holding somewhere in the region of about five quadrillion or maybe five quintillion redstone flux in total, which is just an unthinkably large amount of redstone flux that we're never going to fill and, and certainly never going to use. However, there's a bit of a catch and that is that if we want to make either the induction cells or the basic induction providers, we're going to need lithium. The basic induction providers just require it right off the bat, and the basic induction cells also require it as well. So we're going to need quite a bit of lithium, especially if we're gonna go for the higher tiers, because to make an ultimate induction cell, you need four elite induction cells. Of those, you need four advanced induction cells, and for those, you need four basic induction cells, and for those, you need you know four energy tablets, four lithium dust, and a basic energy cube, which also requires a steel casing. So uh, that means you need, what, four? 16, 64 
I think you need 64 of these uh, machine of these steel casings per ultimate induction cell, and you also need just a ton of lithium. Now, to make lithium is quite an involved setup. The lithium dust, that is. To make it, we have to put lithium into a chemical crystallizer. Lithium is made in a rotary condensator set to deconcentrating mode. This turns liquid lithium into regular lithium. Liquid lithium we can generate using a thermal evaporation controller. This guy I have bookmarked over here. This can turn flowing brine or regular brine uh, into lithium. To make regular brine, we need another thermal evaporation controller. This one can turn water into brine. So we're going to have to set up two thermal evaporation multi-blocks. Uh, these are big multi-block structures, big towers from mechanism that uh, use solar power to turn one liquid into another. So to make these, we're going to need two of these controllers, um, which are made with the thermal evaporation block. We're going to need quite a few of those, as well as some advanced control circuits, a bucket and some glass. And then we also need a few of these thermal evaporation valves as well. Again, fairly easy stuff. However, all of these do require these thermal evaporation blocks, which are made with four steel and one copper. And so I think it's finally time for us to look at setting up a copper bee. As luck would have it, we do have one slot left in our new tier four apiary right here. And so we should be able to uh, fairly easily here, just throw a copper bee in. And given that this is a tier four apiary, we should see uh, the amount of copper that we have start to, uh, to increase very quickly. So copper bee and copper bee. It's getting quite full in here, but that should hopefully work. Now we are running into another issue here. And that issue is that our current centrifuge is not fast enough to run two tier four apiaries, two full tier four apiaries, and then two tier one apiaries. Uh, so much so that if we look in here, you'll see this is all backed up. And if we look in the diamond storage crate above it here, this is also just fully backed up. We have way too many combs being produced, which is definitely less than ideal. I think for now, what I'm going to try and do here is uh, see if we can't push some of the uh, the copper blocks to the front, maybe. And in fact, what I might do, actually, again, kind of temporarily, is uh, if we quickly grab a storage crate, I think we'll dump some of uh, these combs down. But then I think what we'll do is we'll take out the puller module that pulls from at uh, this apiary storage. Going forward, of course, the uh, the best solution for us is going to be to uh, to build another uh, elite centrifuge or maybe even two uh, more elite centrifuges. Um, unfortunately, if we were going to do that right now, we would have to get uh, more of the regular centrifuge casing, that being uh, this stuff right here made with the energizing orb. Um, while that's not super difficult, it would involve us making uh, some higher tier energizing rods, which again, we can do, uh, but it would take quite a bit of time. And I do want to try and get this uh, thermal evaporation tower done before the end of today's stream. So uh, I will take out this apiary for now, and that should hopefully free up some space for our new copper bees to get going. So I am gonna push these uh, copper blocks to the front of the queue here. I don't think we're going to need that much copper. It is only one copper per four thermal evaporation blocks. So we should hopefully be okay on that front. Uh, we are also going to need quite a bit of steel, but again, we do still have uh, 4,000 steel here, so we should be good on that front as well. So all we should really have to do now, before we start uh, auto-crafting, is make another compacting drawer for the new, uh, the new copper ingots. So now we have that copper, let us once again head on over to our pattern terminal. Let's teach our system how to make the thermal evaporation blocks, like so. And I don't think we really need to teach it how to make the other two blocks here, because we don't really need too many of those. And they're mostly just made of uh, these blocks right here. One of the other things we're also going to need is solar panels from Mechanism. These guys right here, we're going to have to get eight of these because each thermal evaporation plant, the actual multi-block itself, uh, requires four of these in order to form. Uh, these are made with iron, infused alloys, and solar generators. These solar generators are made with osmium, iron, infused alloys, energy tablets and solar panels. The solar panels are made with glass panes, osmium, infused alloys, and a redstone. So uh, let's go ahead and see if we don't have any infused alloys. And if we don't, we'll go ahead and request a bunch of those. Uh, Glass-wise, we should be good, so we can make some glass panes. From there, we should hopefully be able to make some solar 
panels fairly easily. Um, we need three of those per solar generator, and we need four solar generators per advanced generator. So that's 12 of these solar panels per advanced generator. Um, we need four advanced generators, so we need 48 of these regular solar panels here. Once we have 48 of those, our system thankfully does now know how to make energy tablets. So let's go ahead and make some of those. Beautiful, that's nice and fast. From there, we should be able to make a bunch of solar generators, which unfortunately do not stack, which is less than ideal. But once we have all of those in the system here, uh, we should then be able to go ahead and make hopefully quite a few of these uh, advanced solar generators, preferably eight of them. And nine advanced solar generators later. Uh, we only need eight there. I accidentally made uh, one too many. But uh, eight generators later, that's all of the uh, advanced solar generators that we need. So uh, let us see then. We're going to build this multi-block. And for those unaware, this multi-block is a 4x4 four by, four by up to 18 multi-block. So uh, it looks something a little bit like this, where it's 4x4. Four four. The bottom is solid. The walls are then full of the uh, evaporation block, like so. And it basically continues like that with uh, a 2x2 two two hollow area in the middle, uh, all the way up. The minimum height is three blocks, so I believe the smallest multi-block you can make looks something like this. And then the highest one is 18 blocks, which of course goes uh, all the way up to 18 blocks tall. Now, I think we're going to build two of these, of course, one to make brine and one to make the lithium. Now, if we look at the recipe here, you'll see that 10 millibuckets of brine makes one millibucket of lithium. And then along the same vein, 10 millibuckets of water makes one millibucket of brine. So the idea here is that the taller you make the evaporation tower, the more millibuckets you can convert per tick. Now, with water, turning water into brine, we're going to want to have a big multi-block so we can turn as much water as possible into brine. However, with the second multi-block, it doesn't quite need to be as big. In fact, it only needs to be uh, one-tenth as big are able to process one tenth as much fluid because it's only ever going to be doing 10% of what the first multi-block does because the first one's turning water into brine, which is a 10 to one, and the second one is then doing brine to lithium, which is another 10 to one, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and make um, a maximum size 18 tall plant for the uh, water to brine recipe. And then we'll make a smaller, maybe five tall multi-block for, uh, for the brine to lithium recipe. So I think if my numbers are correct here, we're going to need about 220, maybe 216 of these uh, thermal evaporation blocks, maybe a few less actually, because we are gonna use uh, one of the slots for the controller and a few of the slots for uh, evaporation valves, but uh, we'll go ahead and we will request 220 of these. Uh, we should have more than enough copper for that. In fact, uh, we are currently up at a 300 copper and this only required 50 there. So 220 should be more than enough. We'll also go ahead and craft up the controller, like so. And we will also craft up two of these valves here. One to take water in and one to take brine out. So I think we'll build these over here. Let's do one, two, three, four. Of course, build in that uh, four by four base, like so. We're then going to go 18 blocks up, or I guess 17 blocks up, from here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I think that's correct. Um, but what I should have done there, though, chat, is I should have done something like this. And then done 1, 2, and then change this to this. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I think that's maybe correct. It looks like we are just one block short there. Although, what we're going to do here is we're going to take out these corner blocks because this is where the solar panels go. And we're also going to take out this block right here uh, because that is where the controller is going to go. So the controller can go there. The solar panels are then going to go here, 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 if I can get those down, and here, like that. And then if we put this last block right about there, you see the red particle effects, you know the multi-block is successful. And so now if we were to open up the controller here, we see the thermal evaporation plant 
interface. It does say in here, height is 17, so I think we're actually one block shorter than we can be. Uh, let's go ahead and request another little batch of evaporation blocks here. We are, of course, gonna build another multi-block, so uh, those are not gonna go to waste whatsoever. Um, I don't know if I can break all of these at once here. I totally can, beautiful. Uh, yeah, let's move this up by just one more block. Okay, so one block taller. We're now at the maximum uh, 18 high, so four by four by 18 tall. And what we need to do now is replace two of these blocks with valves. We'll put down one right about here, and we'll put down the other one right about here. Uh, the idea with these is that we're going to have water going into the one on the left, and then the one on the right is gonna be the one that uh, takes the brine that we produce and sends it over uh, to the next evaporation plant. So let's quickly head home and once again steal this sink here. We are going to need to get yet more mechanical pipes here. Now, unlike with the wind turbine, I don't think we're going to need anywhere near a pump rate of 64,000 millibuckets per tick. In fact, I think that uh, this structure that we're gonna build here is gonna max out at about 1,000 millibuckets per tick. Uh, just to be on the safe side, I will upgrade to the elite mechanical pipe here, which can do 16,000 millibuckets per tick. But essentially, we're gonna take this, we're going to put it down right about here, we're then going to use our mechanical pipe along with our configurator. Make sure this is set to extract. This should then begin filling with water on the left. And you'll see right now we're already full up on brine. Uh, so we do want to start taking that brine out and pumping it over into the next multi-block. So once again, uh, let's go and request a bunch of thermal evaporation block. We'll also go ahead and make another controller with two more valves. And we're gonna build the exact same multi-block, but this time maybe just five tall, so just a bit shorter. Okay, so once we've got our second uh, evaporation tower down, what we should be able to do is somewhat jankily run mechanical pipe from one tower over to the other. Going forward, what I might actually do is I might run this like kind of down under the uh, grass here and then back up and out, uh, but just as kind of a proof of concept for the time being let's get all of these connected up like so we're then going to set you to extract which is not how you do that isaac you need to make sure you set it to uh fluid mode first otherwise that will not work let's try that again you make sure that's not set to wrench mode you want it set to fluids extract that's gonna pull the brine out over into this evaporation tower, which is then going to begin producing liquid lithium. From there, we have to take that liquid lithium and make another rotary condensator. Of course, once again, we're gonna put this in decondensating mode to turn the liquid lithium into uh, lithium gas. So we are gonna to have to use the pressurized pipes, not the mechanical pipes, uh, to pull out of the rotary uh, condensator in a moment here. For now though, let's put this guy down uh, let's say right about here, we will then extract the liquid lithium, again, using mechanical pipes. Make sure that's set to extract. That's gonna fill up in here. We do wanna make sure, again, it's set to deconcentrating. We then want to grab another flux point, which we should be able to request from our system to give this guy some power, like so. And uh, we are gonna wanna put speed and energy upgrades in there, but we'll come back to that in just a second. And then from there, the final uh, machine, I believe, was the crystallizer. This guy right here, which again, doesn't actually look too bad. Nice. So we'll put that down right about here. Again, we are going to need pressurized pipe here. Thankfully, we do have some ultimate pressure tube, even though we're definitely not going to need uh, the throughput of this tube. But uh, essentially, if we do the same thing here and give this guy some power, which we can do with our elite universal cable, like that, uh, we should hopefully see if we set this here to gases and we set this to extract, we'll see the lithium gas moving over into the chemical crystallizer and then slowly but surely being turned into lithium dust that we can then use for our induction cells. So now we need to look at actually making this a good deal faster because of course we need four lithium dust per induction cell um, and per tier of induction cell, of course, we need multiple uh, basic induction cells to make the higher tier induction cells. So we're going to need a lot of lithium. Uh, right now, the bottleneck is here. So uh, what we can do is just get more speed and energy upgrades. I think I will very quickly head back and teach our system how to make both speed 
and energy upgrades. That could be a little tricky when it comes to the, uh, the dust in the middle. Although what we could do, if I quickly encode this recipe as well, um, is we could get a crusher down and just teach our system how to crush both gold and an osmium dust. Chat is also pointing out that, uh, once again, I am swap blind and I have used the wrong glass for my crafting recipe. Thank you, Chat. Let's quickly fix, I assume, both of these. So let's go ahead and make another crusher here, which is a fairly easy recipe. It does require two buckets of lava, which we should be able to grab nice and easily from our near infinite supply of, uh, of lava that we have over here. And boom. From there, I might even go as far as to upgrade that uh, to a crushing factory. Boom and boom. And then for now, because we're not using this infusing factory just yet, I'm actually not quite sure why there are ironing gets in here at all. Unless maybe this is set to, yeah, this is set to output on the right-hand side, which is not supposed to. I don't know why there would be iron ingots in the output side there anyway. Nor am I sure where those uh, iron ingots have come from. We'll get rid of those. <laughs> but yeah, given that we're not using this infusing factory, I think what we'll do is we'll replace this guy, for now at least, with a basic crushing factory, like so. We can then make sure that uh, the front is set to output, auto-eject on. And then all we should have to do is up here, we'll teach our system how to make both osmium dust, encode, and gold dust, encode. And if we put both of those patterns in over here, we should then be able to request both speed and energy upgrades. So let's go with uh, 16 of each for now. That's going to fill up both the uh, rotary condenser trader and the chemical crystallizer. So start and start. Make sure auto sort is turned on. And we could probably actually do with using the uh, the first set of, uh, of speed and energy upgrades to speed up the uh, crushing factory here. And boom, we have uh, two lots of speed and energy upgrades. So uh, back over here, we should be able to speed up this uh, end portion of the system. So speed and energy and speed and energy beautiful uh, so now these are using actually a staggering amount of redstone flux this is using fifty-one thousand redstone flux per tick my goodness that is quite high thankfully this is not a system we need running permanently for now we will grab a draw here and we'll also grab a uh, logistical transporter we do have one i'm going to make a, a slightly higher tier uh, logistical transporter here if we can just because i think um, that it is probably going to be worthwhile to extract quickly from... Also, I should request, like, a stack of these. Uh, but to extract quickly from this uh, crystallizer here. So we'll do U, make sure the torch goes back down. We don't want any mob spawning. And U, and then we'll make sure this is set to item mode. And extract. And there we go. So we should see all of the uh, lithium being pulled out. Uh, this is now working as fast as it can. Uh, this is also working as fast as it can. And so it actually looks like we don't have to really worry about uh, speeding up our evaporation blocks. I really thought we might have to, but we're kind of getting the lithium dust fairly quickly here. And uh, it seems like everything is just kind of working. So my plan was to try and make this faster. If we look in here, this guy is currently producing 450-ish uh, millibuckets per tick. You'll see it's going down right now. The reason the number is going down is because it's dark, and this guy is currently powered by solar panels. So one thing you can do if you want is you can make a resistive heater, which is this guy right here. The resistive heater can take redstone flux and turn it into heat. So if you put down one of these resistive heaters onto a uh, thermal evaporation valve, you can essentially use redstone flux to heat up the thermal evaporation controller. You'll see right now it's at 1.02 thousand Kelvin. Um, the lower this number gets, obviously the fewer millibuckets it can turn into brine per tick. The higher this number, the more it can do. Um, I believe the maximum 18 ton multi-block we have here, um, if you max it out on heat, which you can do with the resistive heater, you can do about a thousand millibuckets per tick. And then over here, I think you could do about 300 on a, a five tall multi-block. But really, I don't think we have to worry about it too much because we're really already producing more than enough lithium dust. And we are also um, already producing more than enough lithium 
than our chemical crystallizer can handle. So if we were going to speed either of these two up, we'd either have to make... We'd have to make both more chemical crystallizers and more rotary condensators, which kind of seems a little unnecessary at this point in time. So back over here, induction, let's look at teaching our system how to make these basic induction cells. So energy tablets, it already knows how to make. The basic energy cube, we should be able to teach it. Again, it already knows the energy tablets and it already knows steel casings. So that should be good. From there, we can teach it the basic induction cell. We should then also be able to teach it the advanced induction cell as well as the elite induction cell. And then finally the ultimate induction cell. So well, let's head on down to our lower level here. Um, I think we are out of crafting spaces. We are, thankfully we should be able to make another crafter here. Let's go ahead and throw this guy down right about here. Again, preferably we want that pointing directly upwards. We'll then go ahead and throw all of our recipes into there. And from there, we should be able to request, hopefully, an induction cell. We cannot... Oh, it requires recipes for all of the uh, the higher tiers of crafters. Uh, not crafters. Uh, it requires recipes for all of the higher tiers of energy cube. I guess that makes sense. Let's quickly teach our system how to make the advanced energy cube, the elite energy cube, and the ultimate energy cube. And again, we'll throw all of those into here. From there, do we have what it takes to make this guy? We do not. We're missing two. We're missing 1,452 gold, as well as 81 lithium. So the lithium should be easy enough. I'm going to assume we've got a few hundred lithium over here now. We do, 376. So we're getting that in is not going to be a problem. The problem, though, is going to be uh, the gold, because right now we actually don't have a gold bean. So in, from that standpoint, have no way of making gold. What we can do, if we wanted to, it's going to be incredibly anticlimactic, uh, but we could request a basic induction cell. And then we could also uh, go ahead and craft a basic induction provider, uh, which is going to require another energy cube here, but thankfully we can craft that up. Boom and boom. And uh, we could put one basic induction provider and one basic induction cell uh, into this giant 17 by 17 by 17 induction matrix. I'm fairly certain you could put these anywhere inside the multi-block. So we could just, for example, do this and this, and then uh, go ahead and put that glass back in on the way out here. And this will work. We have uh, 3.2 billion redstone flux worth of storage, which is quite a lot considering how much space there is in here and how little we've actually put into it. Uh, but that should just go to show just how you know much storage uh, you can put into this thing. Uh, if we quickly go ahead and grab a flux point, what we're probably going to want to do is maybe set up a, a subnetwork, if we can, to allow us to uh, send all of our power through the energy cube here. So let's take our flux plug and we'll put this right about, um, we'll actually put this right at the bottom, I think. We'll take our induction port and we will head all the way down to the bottom and right underneath, uh, or right above, I should say, this item router is where we're going to put our induction port. And this is also where we're going to put our flux point. So ideally, I think we want to maybe set up a sub network here. So create a new network. Uh, GOC power in. Let's make it uh, yellow. Password is power in. Create. And so if we go ahead and take power in there, what we should then be able to do is if we head on over to our turbine, we can swap the flux plug over here from the Gaming on Caffeine network to the power in network. Beautiful. And then over on this side, we can have a flux plug that pulls energy out of this giant cube and sends it to the Game on Caffeine network. So what should happen here, and we might have to uh, shift right click this maybe. Yeah, to set it to output with the configurator. But what should happen now is power should be coming in from the turbine at a rate of 102,000 
FE per tick. So right now we actually can't bring the power in fast enough because our uh, turbine can produce uh, 285,000 uh, FE per tick. Uh, let me quickly go ahead and see if we can't make uh, two more of these basic induction providers. Again, going forward, we are gonna wanna teach our system how to make all of the tiers of, uh, of induction provider. But for now, let's just do this and request two more. And then let's put both of these into here. Chat has pointed out I can do uh, one of these to get in. Uh, again, the induction providers don't increase the capacity of the cube. They just increase the amount that you can insert and extract from the cube. So it's only this induction cell at the top that's increasing our capacity. And then all three of these um, are being used to, um, to increase the power in and out. So now if we head on back out here, uh, we should hopefully see a power in and out that is much higher. So it looks like you do have to break and replace the multi-block to make it register. Um, I just broke one of the corner pieces there and now it is working. Uh, but now we have a max input of 309,000 uh, FE per tick. And so finally, if we head on over to this turbine here and we turn it back on, you know, we turn back on the fission reactor, we should see the power being generated. We're making uh, 285,000 uh, FE per tick but it is being instantly transported over to our induction matrix. Now the question becomes, with the current cell that we have, the uh, 3.2 Giga FE capacity cell, how long would it take to fill it? So the 3.2 Giga FE is 3.2 billion redstone flux. Um, if we divide that by 285,000, that means that it would take 11,000 ticks to fill it. If we divide that by 20, that's 5,000 seconds. If we divide that by 60, I think it's going to take about 10 minutes to fill this cell at our current speed, just because we're producing so much redstone flux. So obviously, this is not a good or permanent solution. This cell is going to fill up very quickly, just because we don't have enough storage. So if I was to leave this running between streams, we would fill up the cube, the turbine would stop working, the reactor would receive no water, and the whole thing would melt down and explode, which is obviously not what we want. And so once again, I'm gonna hit scram. We're gonna turn off the uh, the reactor and the turbine for the time being. And uh, next time we'll come back, we're gonna have to do a little bit of work on automation. We're gonna have to look at getting a gold B. Hopefully we can upgrade our apiaries and we'll look at making a few more centrifuges as well uh, so we can begin actually processing all of the honeycombs uh, that we're producing. Uh, like I said, we'll get a gold B. We'll look at being able to make some of the higher tier induction cells uh, so we can hopefully fill this thing up um, with as many cells as we possibly can and, uh, and from there hopefully uh, be able to store just a, a crazy amount of redstone flux uh, and then hopefully safely be able to run our turbine 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And um, we'll also look, I think, in the next stream at beginning to process our nuclear waste and seeing if we can't move on to the mecha suit armor. This is the late game armor from Mechanism. I think we should be able to look at starting to make this fairly soon. And uh, we are going to have to go through a little bit of a process to make the HDPE sheets, uh, but it really shouldn't be too difficult. And at that point, we're probably going to also swap out our jetpack for an angel ring, uh, which is finally going to give us creative mode flight uh, with no redstone flux per ticks requirements whatsoever. But for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.